Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Loves Data, and in this video you're going to learn about how the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in the EU, could impact the data you're collecting in Google Analytics. This is especially important if you're using a personal identifier in Google Analytics to combine data with other platforms. For example, if you're linking data from Google Analytics to information in your CRM or email platform. We'll cover important things you need to be aware of, like what personal data is, the impact of GDPR if you're not located in the EU, and dealing with requests for personal data to be deleted. Let's get started. So what is the GDPR? Well, the GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation, is a framework that gives people in the European Union rights over their personal data and how their personal data is used. The European Commission, which oversees the GDPR, says that it regulates the processing by an individual, a company, or an organisation of personal data relating to individuals in the EU. And it defines personal data as any information that relates to an identified or identifiable living individual. Examples of personal data that could fall under the GDPR include names, addresses, email addresses, identification numbers, location data, cookie IDs, and more. The GDPR is very broad, so I just want to highlight that although it's a hot topic when it comes to marketing, it actually goes well beyond Google Analytics, AdWords, and other advertising platforms. For example, the GDPR applies when someone provides their personal details to sign up for an electricity provider, so it's not just limited to marketing. With the implementation of the GDPR, it's the perfect time to assess all the personal data you're collecting and look for opportunities to minimise your data collection. If there's something you're currently collecting that you don't need, then you can reduce your risk by reducing the amount of data you collect in the first place. So who does the GDPR apply to anyway? The regulation applies to anybody that collects personal information for someone in the EU. So if you have people from the EU visiting your website and providing their personal information, then you'll need to comply with the regulation. It's not about where you or your organisation is located, it's about where individuals are located and if they're in the EU, then it applies to you. Under the GDPR, you can be considered a data controller or a data processor. It's likely you'd be considered a controller, you or your company that is, and that's because you're deciding the purpose and the means of processing personal data. For example, if you're using Google Analytics, you'd be the controller of the data. You've selected to use Google Analytics, and then Google Analytics is the processor. They're responsible for processing the data on your behalf. We'll come back to more specific points around Google Analytics in a moment, but it's important to point out that both the controller and processor have obligations to individuals under the regulation. Under the regulation, we need a legal basis for processing personal data. This applies if we're a controller or a processor. The regulation means that personal data must be processed in a lawful and transparent manner. But what is a lawful basis for processing data? Let's take a look. The lawful basis for data processing is set out in the GDPR under Article 6. At least one of these must apply whenever you process this personal information. The options are consent, where the individual has given clear consent for you to process their personal data for a specific purpose. Contractual, where the processing is necessary for a contract that you have with the individual. A legal obligation, where the processing is necessary for you to comply with the law. Vital interests which is where the processing is necessary to protect someone's life. Public task, where the processing is necessary in the public interest, and the task or function has a clear basis in law. And legitimate interests, where the processing is necessary for your legitimate interests, unless there's a good reason to protect the individual's personal data. In terms of digital analytics and marketing, most organisations are using consent as the lawful basis of processing personal data. But depending on your circumstances and organisation, you can use any of these options as the lawful basis for processing data. Individuals have rights under the GDPR and you'll have responsibility to those individuals. People have the right for a copy of their personal data. They can ask for changes and for errors to be corrected and they can ask for their personal data to be deleted. This includes data in Google Analytics that identifies them, as well as data in the other systems you are using, like email platforms. 
as an organization, you have responsibilities. You'll need to reply to requests in a timely manner, so within a month. You can ask for additional details to confirm their identity. If someone has asked for a copy of their personal data, you'll need to provide this in a commonly used electronic format, like a spreadsheet, text document, or PDF. And you need to respond to requests free of charge. You do have the right to refuse or charge a fee if the request isn't reasonable, but you'll need to have clear grounds for doing so. What if I don't do anything? What will happen? Individuals have the right to lodge a complaint if their personal data is not being managed appropriately. Under the regulation, different sanctions can be applied depending on the type of non-compliance that has occurred. This can include written warnings, company reprimand, suspension of data processing and fines. So fines of up to 20 million euros or 4% of global turnover can be issued based on the infringement. Here are some things that I've personally struggled with when it comes to GDPR. First is cookie IDs. The way you approach privacy will depend on how you see cookie IDs. If you're able to identify someone based on a cookie ID, or you can combine the cookie ID with other information to identify someone, then this would be considered personal data. However, if you're unable to identify someone using their cookie ID, then this could be considered anonymous or pseudonymous data. Cookies are also covered by the e-privacy directive, and there are proposed changes to this legislation, so it gets a little more complicated. And when it comes to remarketing, you'll also need to consider what type of data you're using. For example, if you're remarketing based on email addresses, like customer lists in Google AdWords, then you'll need consent, so a positive opt-in to remarket based on email addresses. However, if you're simply remarketing to people viewing content on your website, if you're not able to identify those individuals, then it wouldn't be based on personal data. And I've also struggled with who the GDPR applies to. Does it just apply to EU citizens and residents, or does it also apply to people visiting the EU? The regulation doesn't specify. My guess is that this won't have a major impact, but it's something I've encountered. Now, when it comes to Google Analytics and using cookies, I have seen conflicting messages about requiring opt-in. For example, lots of websites are using a soft opt-in where people click agree or continue using the website, in which case cookies are stored in the user's browser. Currently, I have a cookie banner implemented on my website notifying people in the EU about cookies, and I provide a link to my privacy policy. If you're not identifying people using cookies, for example, with the user ID feature in Google Analytics, then it's probably okay to continue using a soft opt-in for your cookie notification. The e-privacy directive, which specifically relates to cookies, says, you must tell people if you set cookies and clearly explain what the cookies do and why. You must also get the user's consent. Consent can be implied, but must be knowingly given. Now, when it comes to using Google Analytics, there are two types of requirements we need to meet. We need to meet the requirements set out by the GDPR, and we need to meet the requirements set out by Google. The privacy requirements set out by Google include having a privacy policy on your website that describes how Google Analytics is used, and telling users how they can opt out of being tracked into Google Analytics. Google also requires that we don't send any personally identifiable information directly into Google Analytics. These requirements are set out in the Google Analytics Terms of Service, which we need to agree to before using Google Analytics. The terms say that you will not and will not assist or permit any third party to pass information to Google that Google could use or recognize as personally identifiable information. So what is considered personally identifiable information? Well, basically it means anything that's readable from your reports. So if I could log into your account and read someone's name, email address, residential address, credit card number, or IP address. These would all be considered personally identifiable information, and we can't send this information directly into Google Analytics. So we can't send things like email addresses to Google Analytics. However, we are allowed to send IDs, like IDs from our CRM or email platform into Google Analytics. This is separate from the GDPR, so we'd still need a legal basis for sending this ID into Google Analytics and storing personal data in our other systems. There are different privacy-related features available in Google Analytics. These include the data retention setting. The data retention setting lets you choose how long to keep user-level data in your reports. 
although it doesn't impact most of the standard reports and aggregated metrics, it will affect user-level data, like when you create user-based segments. And it will also impact user-based reports, like the User Explorer report. You can find the data retention setting by navigating to Admin, and then selecting Data Retention under Tracking Info. You can then see the current data retention setting, and you have the option to set the retention period. The default is 26 months, but you can change this to 14 months, 38 months, 50 months, or so the user level data doesn't expire. Personally, I've selected a longer data retention period because I feel that it fits with my use of Google Analytics and the data I'm collecting. Google Analytics has also released the User Deletion API, which lets you delete data associated with individual users. This can be used for deletion requests. You can find details about the User Deletion API on the Google Analytics developer's site. You'll find it listed under Configuration. It includes details about using the API, and I've included a link in the description below this video. The other privacy feature you can use in Google Analytics is IP anonymization. This lets you anonymize your users' IP addresses. Google Analytics doesn't report on IP addresses, but it does use IP addresses to process data. The feature provides an extra level of privacy for your users, but it does reduce the accuracy of the location reports. If you're using Google Tag Manager, it's easy to modify your Google Analytics tag to make use of IP anonymization. You can simply edit your Google Analytics settings variable and use the More Settings option to set Anonymize IP to True. That's it. So there's some of the most important things you need to be aware of when it comes to the GDPR, Google Analytics and privacy. Just remember that you need to take an extra level of care if you are sending an identifier like user ID to Google Analytics. You can find a link to get my Google Analytics privacy checklist in the description below this video. How are you dealing with GDPR? I'd love to know how you're dealing with privacy. Let me know in the comments below. Take a moment to subscribe to my channel to receive the latest tips and tutorials. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.